Hello, and welcome to Scope Diva Radio, and I'm your host, Angela Embry, and you know what we're doing today. We are building naked confidence, mind, body, and soul. What is naked confidence? Well, let me ask you a question. When is the last time you looked in the mirror naked and you enjoyed or you loved what you saw in the mirror? If it's been a while, this radio show is for you. Again, I'm your host, Angela Emery. I have been a personal trainer and aerobics instructor for 15 years now. So I understand and know how to build the confidence you see in the mirror better. We're going to do this through physical activity, through workouts on YouTube. Also, if you're in Atlanta or any other area, stay on Stay tuned to SculptDealFitness.com for any events that I'm hosting. We'll be hosting booty boot camps. I know we have a booty boot camp coming up pretty soon. Booty boot camp is that lap dance workout that I love to have you come to. But we're building not only your naked confidence, but your sensual confidence as well. Um, I have plenty of boot camps, other, but other non-booty boot camp workouts. But hit workouts and a host of aerobics classes all around the Atlanta area. Again, as a personal trainer, so you can also reach me on SculptDivaFitness.com where we can come and you can see different workouts you can do either at home or where I can come to you and help work you out at, at home. So let's go on with our show. Today we have a great show prepared for us today, and we'll be talking with someone who is also in the fitness industry. We'll be talking with a fitness professional who does the nutrition, who also does personal training, and a little bit of Reiki and energy coaching as well. We'll get into that in a second. But please welcome Saray to the show. Hello, Saray. Saray, how are you? Oh, I'm doing very well. How are you today? I am great. I am great. So thank you for joining us on Sculpt Duo Radio. Oh, thanks. It's, it's going to be a good day, I can tell. I can tell already. <laughs> Um, so I'd like to start off with these uh, interviews a little bit more about learning about you. What was your fitness journey, or how did you become in, into the fitness arena? Well, I've always been a fit person. I've always exercised. I ran track in high school. And once I went into the military in way back in 1979, <laughs> <laughs> Way then right all of the things that I had done up to that point just kind of came to fruition. And okay. I realized that this is what I liked, running and jumping and climbing and doing those types of things and testing myself and pushing my body. I really enjoy that. So my first entry into the military, I decided then that I wanted to be a drill sergeant mm, in my okay. career. So further in my career, I became a drill sergeant. I got to train people and and scream at them and yell at them and drop them and make them give me 20. And <laughs> those kind of things really motivated me. So I said, hmm, I have two small boys. Let's put them in Boy Scouts. And then I'll have, like, small people that I can whip into shape. So right. that's, that's pretty much how it started. I, I started in the military, became a drill sergeant. After I was a drill sergeant, I came out of the military and I opened my own salon and wellness center, and that's when I started doing energy work like Reiki and uh, Tai Chi, as well as hands-on therapies and things like that. I really enjoyed that kind of stuff. But I always kept the fitness element ingrained in all of that so that no matter what I did, there was always a physical fitness aspect and a holistic fitness aspect that kind of ran the vein through everything that I did throughout my life from then all the way up until now. Wow. So just a quick question, like what brought you into the energy therapies? I know what brought me into, these, into this another world of holistic training or a mind-body connection, but what brought you into the um, energy therapies such as Reiki or tapping or what have you? Well, I met somebody who was just – completely amazing to me, and um, she was a Buddhist priestess. Mm. And uh, I, just spending time with her, just being in her presence, the first time I met her, we, we had such, a, such an electric, immediate, on a different level connection that we became fast friends. And practicing, being a practicing Buddhist wasn't the thing for me. Right. But everything else that skirted on the edge of that, my eyes were okay. wide open and my mouth was salivating 24-7. Oh, 
So wow. I just kind of sucked it up. And I learned so much more about myself and so much more about the world around me and the interconnectedness between us as individuals and as us and as spiritual beings being in a human experience and how we are infinitely responsible for everything that happens mm-hmm. to us and for us, regardless of who we want to place the blame on. We each wow. individually have to make hundreds of decisions to put us exactly where we are at that instant in time, and whatever happens to us in that instance it happened to us because we chose to be there. So regardless of how terrible it is or how great it is, I don't think it's a serendipitous thing. I think that in my experience, I've chosen and made ultimate decisions that got me to the places I got to and ultimately to where I am now to ensure that my place in the world, my place in society um, has been solidified and etched yeah. out. And it's, it's all because of my choices. So uh, let's go into this a little bit. So I wanted to wait a little bit, but since it's here, let's talk about it right now. Okay. Like, what is Reiki? Um, how would you describe someone, to someone who's never had a Reiki experience before, what is Reiki and how does it benefit someone in the mind-body connection with their fitness routine? Well, in fitness, uh, Reiki, is, Reiki is not, no one would originally just kind of put those two things together. Right. But the difference is, if you are a Reiki practitioner or you are a body energy person, to be able to have a client who you're training or who's working out or who's having issues with even their diet, to right. be able to provide them with additional energy to get them through, past, or over some little hump or hurdle that they're experiencing, for instance... As a Reiki practitioner, Reiki is, is basically a life force energy transference type process where okay. through the hands and through your chakras, you have energy that flows through your body, through your meridians, and you have the, everyone has the capacity and the capability of internally using that energy or transferring that energy outside of themselves to other okay. people, to actually plants, <laughs> to, to just provide additional energy or assistance to the person, whether they're needing physical help, emotional help, um, regardless of what it is. Pain, discomfort, all of those things can be helped and sometimes alleviated depending on the level of what's going on with that individual. So as wow. a trainer, as a mind-body personal trainer, when I work with people, I provide them with positive reinforcing energies from the moment we begin a session until we end. Wow, okay. So the disconnect that they may sometimes feel because they don't think they feel like it or this is too uncomfortable or this may be too heavy, I use the opportunity to transmit Reiki energy to them to kind of help them feel more vibrant to feel more prepared, to feel a little stronger, to feel a little more energized, to be able to waylay those small doubts that they have and push them over into the positive side of being able to enjoy and excel at whatever activity it is we're working on at that time. Wow. That sounds great. So what's your take on... Because we have talked about in the past, we talked about uh, EFT tapping. So how do you use tapping within your practice? Well, actually, I teach, I teach the clients to, to tap on their own. So EFT is emotional freedom technique. And it is a technique where you also use the, the meridians of your body, your energy channels and your flows, to be able to receive or gain freedom from issues that you have that bring an emotional attachment with it. So it's to emotionally detach from something that's already happened or is happening in your life. So let's say, for instance, the, the little finger side of your hand, like if you were to look at a karate movie and they would do a karate chop with that side of their hand, 
Right. In EFT, they call that the karate chop point. So if you were to take your, the fingers, the four fingers or the three fingers of your right hand and tap on that point on your left hand, that helps dissipate stress. It helps with right. headaches. It helps you to, to stop and think and be present in the moment long enough mm. to not make a brash or rash decision on something. It allows you that moment where people would sometimes say, just stop and count to ten. This right. helps you do this on an emotional level. Okay. When you may not feel the capacity to just kind of stop and do it on your own. It awesome. assists in helping the body gain emotional freedom over that emotional situation. That is interesting. I love that because even during my stressful days, sometimes I find myself tapping, you know, right before I right as I'm feeling at the peak of those stressful moments, and it just instantly calms you down and brings you back to center. I love how we also just talked about how everything is energy. Like with the Reiki, you're giving energy, getting energy or receiving energy from plants or from anything around us because we all know scientifically that everything's made out of atoms and everything's made out of um, atoms and energy. So everything has energy within it, and so therefore it just makes sense to use these energies to bring forth or bring to us what we want out of life. Exactly. Well, Saran, how do we get in contact with you if we want to find more about Reiki or training with you or what have you? Well, I have a website. It is www.valettasurae.com. And my phone number is 202-341-5335. And I'm in the Washington, D.C. area. Awesome. So, Ray, we'll be right back. And thank you for joining us on Sculpt Diva Radio. Welcome back to Sculpt Diva Radio. I'm your host, Angela Emery. And today we have a wealth of information, as usual, to help us build our naked confidence, you know, Again, when's the last time you saw yourself in the mirror naked and loved what you saw? I am hoping to be able to help you with that. Again, I'm your host, Angela Emery, and today we have Saray on the line on, in the studio today. Hello, Saray. How are you? I'm doing very well, and how are you today? I am good. I am good. Very, very good. I love our topic today because we're talking about energies and currently we're talking about energies and how energy therapy helps the mind-body connection to help us enjoy what we see in the mirror. Before the break, we talked about how everything is energy, so how Reiki will help us attain energy from the plants or the trees or, you know, even everything around us and how this benefits our life. And we also talked a little bit about how EFT tapping or the emotional freedom technique will help us free ourselves from different emotional triggers that have happened in our lives in the past or what we fear or, you know, what have you. Again, Sheree, will you please go over again just really quickly how this benefits what we see in the mirror or our physical workouts? Well, Angela, actually one of the ways that I think that it benefits you is if your environmental energy, if it's positive energy, then it gives you a different perspective from what you see in the mirror and what other people see emanating from you. Mm. You know, there's always that person that you meet. They're always bubbly. They're always positive. You can, you can just get a positive vibe off of them just when you meet them or see them from a right. distance. That's the person you emulate to want to be like. You don't want to be like the person whenever they walk through. They remind you of Schlepprock from that cartoon back in the day. They just got the dark cloud hanging over them. You, 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 you really don't look forward to seeing that person. And especially and as a trainer. You can see that. I'm serious, but as a trainer, you really do not want to see that person walking in the gym with the right. cloud over their head and their shoulders stooped down and and their feet shuffling, and they're cranky and crabby. No, what I want to do with that person is I want to 
have a small conversation with them. And then while I'm talking to them or as soon as I get close to them, I want to begin to start transmitting a little bit of my positivity and my good, good, healthy energy to them to kind of boost them up a little bit so that when we start doing what we're doing, it's like electric. And that's one of the things. I mean, you know, you've got those people that are like psychic vampires. They pretty much just suck you dry. But and it's better when you've got someone who's actually doing the give and take with you. They're able to give a little bit, you're able to give a little bit, and everybody benefits on an energy level so that you enjoy seeing that person, being with that person. And it makes you see yourself the way they see you, which more than likely is not a positive light. Wow. That is awesome. So you're also a raw food uh, nutritionist, correct? A raw food okay. chef. Mm-hmm. Raw I'm food a raw chef. food chef. Yeah. Awesome. So I know this, but I want to help our guests understand this, and I want to rattle some feathers, so let's go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about food. What kind of energies do we get from food? If everything is energy, including our food, does that mean that we're getting some of our depression, anxiety, happiness, sadness, um, from our food? Well, for me, that's, that's part of my truth. I, I, do, I do believe that. I do find that as part of my truth, and that's where I train people from on, on a mind-body level. Okay. We literally are what we eat. So right. if you're eating a, a murdered animal, then there's no way that the fear that that animal felt when it was murdered there's no way that that energy is not in that mm. meat that you're eating, in that milk that you're drinking. Right. That's, that's my truth. Now, that does not mean that that works for everyone. If exactly. That's, exactly. If that's where you are, then great. If that's not where you are, then that's good too. However, if everything on the planet is made of energy, the only difference is the level of the vibration that that thing has. Well, things okay. that are close to the vine, plants, things that are grown in the ground, above the ground in trees, you can see the life in trees. You can see the life in, in a grapevine. You can see the energy that emanates from certain plants. You can feel better when you do this. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a drive now for this thing they call earthing. I remember being a kid, every day I walked outside, in mm-hmm. the grass and my bare feet outside, just playing and ripping and running and rolling in the grass and climbing trees. I have grandkids who, they can't even climb a tree, have wow. never climbed a tree, don't know what to climb a tree feels like. Mm. And because they're so electronically connected, they are completely disconnected from 90% of nature and energy and being grounded and being wow. earth. They're missing all that. And those are the kinds of things that in our workshops, you were talking earlier about your, your what was it, your booty, your booty workout? Booty boot camp. Your booty <laughs> dance workout. Your, yes, Your ma'am. booty boot camp. Well, you know, one of the best things that you can do for your booty is put it on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, that's also the root chakra. So, therefore, yes, put your ass in grass. There you go. Awesome. There you go. There you, talk about being earthed. Oh, my mercy. That's, that's how you get it in. So, yes, walking in the grass, barefooted, sitting in the grass, lying on the grass, um, having your feet on the grass, your behind on the grass, and your back against the tree. Oh, my mm. goodness, the energy that will flow through those centers in your body just by doing those simple things is phenomenal. Lifts you from, from thoughts of, of depression and doubt, just understanding that you're part of something that's greater than you. I mean, that you're just another sentient energy being on the planet. That's, that's just amazing. It's a great feeling. And what I do as a trainer is I try to impart that kind of feeling in my clients when we're training outside. I want them to take their socks off. Mm, I want them to do Tai Chi with their feet on the ground. I want them to feel what that feels like. I want them to stand in mountain pose 
and feel the sun through their crown chakra as the energy is pulled down in their body. And then I want them to suck the energy up through the soles of their feet and meet in the middle in their solar plexus. I want them to feel all of the energy from everything around them because the more connected we are, the better our lives are. And the so less connected it, is, is just not good. How does it better our lives? Like we're, I know we're talking about nutrition, but, you know, how does one getting in touch with our chakras and are in tune with our mind-body connection, you know, just with being in tune with spirit or with presence or being in tune with self on this planet Earth, how does that better our complete lives? How does it decrease stress or what have you? Well, in, in, the, in, the, in the beginning, the first thing that happens is that you begin to notice changes in yourself. Okay. You, you notice that you sleep better that right. you feel better. There, there are a lot of little things that seem unimportant and unconnected, and as days go by, you see that they're just a small part of the big hole. Mm. You didn't realize at first that it's been four days and you haven't had cramps in your toes. Right. Okay. But you haven't done anything different except, oh, you walk in the grass now. Like, wow, so that was the only thing I changed. Well, yeah, you have these little nagging things that go on in our lives that when we notice them, they're just irritants. Yes. But then when you become more in tune with yourself and you allow yourself to be grounded and feel more earthed and you feel more energetic and more energized, you notice that those little nagging things begin to dissipate. And then one day you'll notice that, oh, wait a minute, I haven't, you know, my husband hasn't complained about me grinding my teeth at night. Wow. Oh, you know, I oh, I I I don't uh I I don't wake up immediately with a headache craving coffee. You know, it's right. it's 10:30 and I, I didn't even have coffee yet. Wait, I right. haven't snapped at anyone. Those are the different small little things that sometimes people don't really notice. But when we work with people as mind-body personal trainers, I have a laundry list with like 125 different little symptoms that you take home with you and you fill this out. And you'll mark down all kinds of things that you feel or you go through. And then at the end of 15 days of earthing or getting energy work or learning EFT, when you do this, this assessment over again, you realize that almost – 30% of that stuff is gone. You don't have it anymore. And the only thing you changed was you spent a little bit more time outside with your, your feet in the grass. You learned to do some energy tapping. You disconnected your phone for a couple of hours a day to just give yourself an opportunity to learn to be. Right. Wow. And those are the things that make a difference. And then when you want to change your diet, and you want to start an exercise program, it's 100% easier because you don't have all that other crap that's clogging up your wheels. All that stuff is gone, and it makes so it everything much contact, easier. How do we get in contact with you and learn more about the mind-body connection through fitness? Well, I have a website, and I have a Facebook page, and they're both named the same thing, Valletta okay. Suray. And my website is www dot Valletta Suray, that would be V as in Victoria, A-L-E-T-T-A-S-U-R-A-E dot com. And that's also my Facebook page. So you can reach me on either one of them. Awesome. Ms. Suray, we'll be right back with Scope Diva Radio. But we're going to talk a little bit more about what we can do as beginners or intermediate just to make sure that we can get off of this checklist that you were talking about. We'll be right back with Sculpey the Radio. Welcome back to Sculpey the Radio. I'm your host, Angela Emery, and today we're talking about energy. Everything is energy. And we're talking about how this energy of your food or what you have on inside or all the energy around us affects our workout and affects our day-to-day life. I know a lot of us may be tired, constantly have anxiety, stress, what have you, all that negative stuff, and it's time to get rid of that because that gets in the way of our naked confidence. And you know how I am. 
I'm all about building that confidence. Today we have Saray on the phone. Saray, hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Enjoying the day. <laughs> so last we talked about before, we were talking about what different energies we can get from our food and how our food really does affect us and, you know, with stress and anxiety or what have you, and how the practices of Reiki and EFT, the emotional freedom technique, can help benefit through us through that. But we're also talking about just getting outside and, you know, just walking outside barefoot and our grounding ourselves and making sure our, our, our modalities of our chakras are even out or at least getting some air. Can we go over that just briefly, really quickly? Yeah, sure. We can we can recap on that. See, even if you're even if you're not a person who believes in chakras or believes in Reiki or believes right. in energy healing, you believe in trees. Uh, yeah. You believe in grass. I, it doesn't make sense to me in rational thinking that you can feed your body something and expect it to live and grow and thrive. And if you were to feed that same thing to a plant, it would shrivel up and die. And you think that that has no connection to you. Wow. So if humans were designed, in my opinion, if humans were designed to drink milk from another animal, then we should be able to feed milk to a plant and it grow. But that's not what happens. Exactly. So if for liquid nourishment what we require is water, then we should have water. We're the only adult mammal that drinks the milk of another adult mammal. Wow. That is interesting. And, And that doesn't really make sense to me. No, it doesn't. So... Regardless of what you, where you lie in the spectrum, the earth is here for the use of all the beings on the earth. Man, animals, insects, trees, grass, everything. And they're basic components of what we need, which is air, needs to be clean, as clean as possible, and we need water, and we need oxygen, and we need to be part of that. Wow. That's why we like being with other things that are similar to us, that uplift right. us and make us feel better. And exactly. as a mind, body, personal trainer, I want to be that anchor for some people. I want to be that, 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 that kickstand to hold you up a little bit and get you to the gym. <laughs> right, exactly. I want to be that little that little thing that sits on your shoulders when you're at the at the buffet and you know you got <laughs> stuff on your plate that you probably ought not to have on your plate. I want to be that little thing that's on your shoulder that says, well, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't have nine pieces of this, but I can have two. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have six slices of roast beef. Maybe I should only have one. Right, because exactly. I think this little calf might have screamed and suffered when it was being murdered for my benefit. Yeah, because I honestly wow. believe if people still had to kill their own food to eat it, yeah, Most we'd have lots food. of vegetarians or pescatarians. Because I think Most they could the eat food. some fish. They they would catch a fish, but I really couldn't see them catching a salmon. Oh, <laughs> I wow. really couldn't see them, you know, killing a beef. I, I couldn't see that happening. Yeah, I've watched a couple of videos on, you know, how our food industry kills, especially the chickens or the pigs, and even – with my own diet, I've backed off of chicken a little bit because of how our society kills the chickens per se, and because I become, I've noticed also I become anxious, and not even just consciously, just all of a sudden throughout my day, and my day's pretty mild, okay, I'm used to my day, and all <laughs> of a sudden I'm just sitting behind my car chilling, not doing anything wrong, whatever, and all of a sudden I'm just anxious for no reason. I'm like, okay, did I have chicken today? Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, I did. Okay, note yeah. to self. All right, got it. <laughs> go drink some water. Go get some alkaline water. Go get some vegetables. Flush it out, flush it out, flush it out. Something. So that is really awesome and interesting how the food that we eat or the 
mammals that we kill will be able to still affect us in that way. But getting back to the gym, how what common mistakes do you think people should be able to, uh, well, not mistakes, but so tips you could bring to people so they're not able to make those mistakes in the gym when coming on, you know, coming off of a long hiatus of not working out? <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what are some tips you could give a beginner to so that they can not have these hardships of, you know, off the fitness journey, off and on, back on and off the wagon? Well, first of all, I think that that fitness begins with the first step. And the first step is the same one you did from when you were an infant, and that's crawling or walking. Right. In order to build a fitness habit, you have to start doing something every day. And that everyday thing, in my opinion, should be walking. Okay. You should walk 30 to 60 minutes every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And I don't mean strolling around Walmart or Costco. That doesn't count, you sure? It might add to your 10,000 steps a day, which is like one of the levels of recommendation, but it's not really cardio walking. Right. See, and, and when you're starting off in the beginning, when you walk that first 100 meters, oh, my God, your sides get the side sticker, your thighs and your butt start itching, your, your lungs feel like they're on fire, your knees are cracking and buckling. <laughs> That's not a sign to stop. It's just a sign to slow down and just keep going. But the okay. thing is, if you set yourself up with a precedent of success, then success is yours. Yeah. If you set yourself up with a precedent for success, then success shall be yours. And the easiest thing for you to do is walk every day. By the fourth day, your legs will stop itching. Yeah, by the third day, your lungs stop burning. By the fifth day, you actually kind of look forward to the walk. Right, yeah. At the end of a week, you can tell that you've done something different. You sleep a little better. You get up a little easier. You're not as cranky. Your bodily fluids begin to excrete from your body on a more frequent basis. I mean, right. I've had clients that, that, that are only pooping like once a week. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you know, and you get them moving and drinking water and juicing grapes, and next thing you know, that, that little pooper shooter's working, and that, that, <laughs> and that hard mass, it. yeah, that hard mass in their stomach is going down. Their, their urine has changed from the color of Starbucks to something close to lemonade. Their breath doesn't smell so bad. Their sweat right. doesn't, their body odor has changed. I mean, you, it's remarkable the changes that happen in your body when you just begin to drink water, begin to walk, and put your feet on the earth. It's easy wow. and it's simple. And those kind of things motivate you to do the hard things, like mm. work on your diet. Exactly. It does. It seriously does. Even in my own personal fitness journey, it has seriously motivated me to do some other changes that I don't know, five years ago, I never would have thought I was saying it. But yeah. Exactly. I mean, 80% of, of health care should be self-care. Exactly. And the two things that you do for that, number one, is you move, which means walking at minimum. If you can't walk, swim if you have it available to you. If you need to ride a bike, ride a bike. Something, you need to move at least an hour every day. And then you need to drink water. You need to have that lubrication in your system. I mean, our bodies are made up, you know, I've seen things from 70 to 80% of water. So right. if you don't have enough, then that means you're dehydrated. And if you're dehydrated, you see what's going on in California with not enough rain. They're dehydrated. It's not good. Exactly. It's not good. De dehydration is not good. And 10 years ago when they told them they were going to be dehydrated, they didn't believe them. It's just no, like your body. If you're not putting water in regularly, then eventually you're going to end up dehydrated, and then you know you're 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 going to have other side effects. But to set yourself up for success begins with water and moving, and everything else will be easier when you implement those things. 
how to eat better, how to spend more time in nature, how to be happier with your friends and family, how to enjoy your life and your work better, how to look good naked. <laughs> right, yes, you know me. Mr. Ray, thank you for joining us today. I, I know we could keep going on and on, but it's almost time for us to end our show. But, again, how do we get in contact with you so we can build our naked confidence through our mind-body connection? Well, I have a website, and it is the same as my Facebook page, and that would be com. That is www.v, as in Victoria, dot com. And, again, that is also my Facebook page. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for putting the emphasis on the energies around us that affect our bodies, which also affect our naked confidence. This, you know, I, I preach about it all the time, but I'm so glad that you were able to come on to the show today and help us with that and bring some clarity to it because it is such an important part of our lives. It's like oxygen. We have to make sure the energies around us are what we need to have around us to have a successful fitness journey. So thank you again. Oh, you're so welcome. So you can also find me. Uh, Angela Emery at www.sculptdivafitness.com. There you will find a host of events, aerobics classes, boot camps, and also a booty boot camp event that's coming up very soon in the Atlanta area. I know tickets may be about $10, but you should be there to learn how to get your sexy back, to feel good naked, and, you know, bring something home fun for the husband or, you know, that boo thing that you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm all about that. But also, if you want to train with me, again, I have events all around town, and you can also go to sculptdealfitness.com for my personal training prices. And in addition, if you want to find me and we want to go into a Fitbit challenge, I'm all about the Fitbit and getting that 10,000 steps in. Um, so let's keep that Fitbit friends or Facebook friends, and let's also build your naked confidence through social media. Oh, in addition, I know there's a new workout on YouTube for, again, Make sure you check out Sculpt Diva Fitness on YouTube so we can challenge those workouts, challenge your workouts. I will see you soon on Sculpt Diva Radio. Thank you and have a good night.